whether it's uh, international aid organizations or less well off Irish who are doing night duty here in New York, bringing food to uh, homeless people in New York City. So while we Irish benefit from the United States um, help assistance, um, I'd like to think, and I can see it around me every day, the Irish in this great country are giving back. They're giving back in the United States, they're giving back around the world in terms of family relief and support for organizations like Concern. But they've also given back hugely to Ireland. We know that the peace process in Ireland would never have reached the conclusion without the active support of so many of you here today, uh, once they would out. Sounds like a very serious <laughs> conversation. I'll turn briefly by my to while we're still waiting for our significant speaker, uh, to Ireland today. Um, yes, Ireland, Ireland has gone through a difficult time for the last two, three years. It is difficult. But you may have noticed there was no cars burning in the streets. There was no um, riots. Instead, the Irish went about their business. We had an election. There were no soft options in the election. The people were given three, three major parties together with three difficult choices. More than 70% of the people turned out to vote. Democracy in Ireland is alive and well. At the end of the election, we have uh, achieved a government with the largest majority in the history of our state. They're not elected on a mandate of easy options. There are no easy options for Ireland today. What I think is wonderful is a sense of confidence that, they, that they're exuding. And it's a sense of confidence I've felt in Irish America over all of the last fall and winter. So in the Irish American events I went to, um, or Irish Americans stood up and spoke about arriving here poor and what you had achieved in this country. Uh, in Ireland, we aim to uh, recover and uh, that same spirit of can do. And we're going to, we're going to make this work. Um, we have a plan. Uh, we have confidence, we have a government, we have a clear mandate to take the necessary decisions. And all I would ask is that Irish America work with us. Uh, we're going to work too, and just work with us. We're going to come through this, and we're going to show uh, all that's good about the Irish. And finally, one thing on Irish culture. Um, it would be very easy in the current climate, with uh, welfare going down, wages going down. It would be very easy to cut cultural allocations, but instead, in a very, very uh, insightful decision. A decision was taken to use this year to promote Irish culture across the United States. And it's under the title of Imagine Ireland. It's meant to capture the idea of Ireland of the imagination. And it truly is an imaginative uh, program of events. I hope over the course of the coming year, you will all get to see it, whether it's the Abbey Theatre or the or the Druid Theatre performing in New York, and Washington, and so on. All the way across traditional Irish music, classic Irish music, contemporary art, uh, film, all of it is going to go right across this country. And I hope it gives you all an opportunity to see what is best and what is brightest coming out of Ireland today. Because while the economies may go up and down, I'm glad to report the imaginative spirit of the Irish is undaunted. Thank you very much.